morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching this video from. My name is IoT. This is Igor Straka, the home of Nigerian football. And I have a special guest with me, a player for Blotev Plovdiv and the Nigeria under 20 team, um, Tochuku Unadi. Please introduce yourself to us. Um, hi, good afternoon, good morning from wherever you are watching from. Um, Nadi Tochuku, I'm from Nigeria. I'm 20 years old and um, I'm here today with Igu Tracker. Yes, thank you very much, Tochuku. Thanks for, for joining. I want to get to know you a little bit better. Talk about the journey that you've been through to get to the stage that you are at right now. And also just talk about some of the plans that you have for the future. Um, so my first question to you would be, you know, can you just tell us a little bit about your childhood? Um, where were you born? Where did you grow up? What was your family li um, life like? And when did you get into football? Um, I'm from Imo State, and um, I'm from Oweri West, precisely, Iagwa. Um, I grew up there, and I started football when I was young. That, was, that should be at the age of six or five. Yeah. So I started to play football when I was really, really young. So and I fell in when love with you fell in love with football at that age. Yeah. Yeah. So my um when you were growing up, you know, watching football, were your family supportive of you going to play football? We know sometimes maybe your parents can be like, you know, Nigerian parents now go to school. Why are you playing ball too much? You know, how was the support system like with your love for football? Yeah, I think my family is quite different. Um, my mom, my dad. They really wanted me to play football. I got everything as a kid to play football. I'm not from a rich family, but I think my dad did a lot for me to make sure I played football. He helped me a lot. He provided football shoes for me and he supported me from day one. Mm, that's that's very good to to hear. You know, shout out to your your dad for yeah. for doing his best to get you to where you are at. Um, yeah. So, what team did you support, you know, as a young boy growing up? Um, I, I love Manchester United. Mm, mind you. And, <laughs> and, you know, who were some of the players that um, you really loved? Um, or maybe some of the players that you tried to model your game after? Um, I think uh, Michael Carrick. Okay. Yeah. I he was he was on top, I think, at that moment. So I was really watching him a lot and Cristiano Ronaldo also. So I mean so many people in the world love Ronaldo, so that one is not a surprise there. But nah. Michael Carrick, you know, is, is interesting. I think you're the first player that I'm talking to that is telling me that, you know, Michael Carrick was their was the person that they tried to model their game after. But mm -hmm. now that you say it, you know, when I think of your games, I can kind of see um, the similarity. And of course, you guys play, you know, very similar positions in your in your teams. Um, okay, so um, at what point, you know, did you get into the real grassroots football system, you know, and start on this, your path to professional football? Yeah, I played a lot, a lot of games. Um, I was with um, Academy Campus Football F FA. That was then, but now I think they, it's officially a club because they play in the in the in the league and everything. So I played a lot of grassroots games. I think 2015 I also won um, the best player in my state in under 15 competition. So I was doing good as a kid because I love football. I give everything for football. Even um, school, I run out of school because I want to play football and my dad helped me also a lot for that. At Did first, I help you run out of school? Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> At first I was going to, to um, a federal school, which is I think Futo, yeah, Futo Secondary School. It's called FISO. So, but because I don't have time to play football, I have to go out from that school and I join a government school where I can finish early and then go to training. Yeah. 
Interesting, interesting. You know, I can see that your dad has played a key role and I'm sure we'll hear more of it as we continue the conversation. Um, so at what point, you know, I mean, grassroots level, we know how Nigeria is. There are so many good players, so many, you know. But at what point did you realize that I can actually play this thing at a very, very high level and I can go professional? When did you realize? When I was a kid, I think I have something in my head if someone can come out and say you can play football or you're doing very good it means there is something so i put that in my head and i start to grow at some point i think that was um 2012 yeah i watch a lot of games and i i look myself i'll be like I can go to the top if I work hard. I know it's difficult to go at the top, top level in football, but at least I can make myself proud, my family, my friends, to get something. Um, the place where I came from, I don't think we have a professional football player like that is there. It's very difficult. We have like um, a pitch, like a park, where we play in my place. A lot of people do say, if you step your foot in that place, that you're not going to make it. Wow. So I think it's also like a motivation to me. If people can say you will not make it, then I think I have to fight more and do my things. So I continue working and uh, giving everything. And I just have these feelings, like, if you can feel it, just believe it. Yeah. So, that's it. Amazing. I like I like the mentality that you've just um, described there. Um, okay, so let's talk about a little bit of your football. For anybody that has not watched you play, how would you describe yourself as a football player? Um, I think... Um... I think I can be a good player, like like others, like um, Amrabat, um, Jude Bellingham, mm. and uh, a lot of them. Um, I like to I like to be calm with the ball and um, aggressive without the ball, but. With that, I need a lot of work. So I just think uh, I want to be a great midfielder that people will talk about. And that's it. No, I mean, you mentioned Jude Bellingham. Bellingham just signed for Real Madrid, you know, so that's high, high level. Of course, um, we will be believe that you can get there. But like you said, it's just going to take a lot of, of work. Um, okay, so if you could pick maybe one or two qualities that you think are the strongest qualities you have in your game, what would you say they are? I think um, reading the game. I can read the game a lot. And um, positioning also. And I like a lot of short, short combinations if you watch the games. I'm not really good at giving long balls because I don't want to make a, a mistake in the game. I don't want to give a pass where it will not get to the person. So I prefer short combinations and um, yeah. Mm. Interesting. You know, um, when you said reading the game, the first thing that came to my mind was positioning because of course, the better you are at reading the game, you know, the more you know where to be to intercept yeah. passes, you know, to, to create chances for your team and, you know, to help win the ball back. So that's an interesting one. And if there was one thing that you can admit that, hmm, maybe I need to work on this a little bit more, you know, maybe I need to improve on this a little bit. What's that one thing? I think at the moment, for the past um, three, four months, I've not been training a lot, even before going to the World Cup. I had a lot of injuries on my ankles, my both ankles. So it kind of brought my game down 
I'm not really active sometimes because I don't want to get into a space where I can get injured or something. So I try to avoid. So I think my game to improve, I need to be more active. Yeah. If I could be more active, I would be, I would be more an even better player. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, now let's talk about your your path out of Nigeria. Can you just tell us how did it come about? How did you get that transfer? You know, who helped in the in the process, and how did you feel after making that move um, to Butterf Club? I believe you first of all signed for their second team. You know, so just take us through that journey. Okay, um, I was in Dubai. That was early 2021, yeah. Because I signed the contract um, ending of 2020. No, August, August. Uh, August yeah, something like that. So um, I was training with my academy in Dubai, Madinat FC. So it's just like a normal person, you know. You don't know who is watching. You don't know anybody. So we are just training and a guy just came up. He's an agent. I don't know if our boss called him to come and see us. But that was story after I get to know that he was he came to, to watch our game. So we are just training and he saw me. He was like, okay, I have interest on this player, but he need to keep working, 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 and then we'll see what's going to happen. So that was how it started. I think he 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 kind of liked me more after a game we played against um, a Champions League team, like Asian Champions League team. This team they came from Philippines to what to play a, um, a preseason friendly with us. So the first game we played, we played uh, I think um, two two. We we drew two two. The second game was 1-1. One, one. They were leading us and I scored a free kick at the end of the game. So we played 1-1. One, one. So after that game, he called me and was like, okay, everything is good. First, he wanted to take me to Spain. But there was Corona and everything. So it was difficult then. So, and that was how he called me one day. He said, do you know about this team in Bulgaria? You can check. I said, okay. He sent an invitation to my board. Then they called me and I said, okay, I just want something. I just want to start up my professional football career and we see what's going to happen. So I went there. I went there on a trial, not like to sign. I went there on a trial. First, I was training with the second team. Two, three days, I got injured. It was difficult for me because I have just... Um, to two weeks visa. So in my head, I was like, what's going to happen? I have two weeks and I'm injured. So they were like, okay, just be calm. Everything will be okay. So I have to take a lot of drugs, a lot of painkiller just to, to, to be able to play. I played a friendly game with the second team. We lost. They beat us. I can't remember, but we lost. So. After the friendly game, I I came in second half. I did well. It was difficult for me because it's like my first game playing with like professional football players, people who take football as their work. So it's it's difficult. So I learned a lot in the game, and the next day they took me to first team to train with them. That was how it started. I started training with the first team. They extended my visa. They gave me another one month. So I think before the one month could be exhausted, they just gave me a contract. I signed and I went back home. So it was like, then I couldn't get visa and everything. A lot of things was happening then. So, but after everything was settled and I went back, started playing games with the second team and I signed for the first team, but because of my level, they have to put me in the second team. And then after I came to the first team, 
and today I'm playing with the first team. Amazing, amazing. Very interesting story. I can only imagine how you felt when you got injured on trial. You know, of course, you would have been like, ah, oh, man, is my yeah. opportunity about to go like this? But thankfully, you know, everything worked out. Uh, so when you signed that your contract, eh, who yeah. was the first person that you called to tell them that you've signed this contract? I called my dad and my mom because they're always together. I called him. I was like, I've gotten a professional contract. I was not, you know, people do say when you sign a contract, you'll be excited. But I was not that excited. I was just calm. And I called them. They were screaming, ah, God, I've done it, blah, blah, blah. So, but me, I was just calm. I was not like how people do say, like, when you sign a contract or when you get a contract, you have to be, you are happy, you are smiling, you are singing, you know. But for me, I was just calm. And I spoke with my dad. I said, I've signed a professional contract. And now I have to work. So I'm, I'm assuming you're somebody that's in every situation, you just always, you know, you're just always mellow, just calm, mm -hmm. just um, yeah. mm -hmm. doing your thing. Okay, okay, that's that's nice to hear. Um, and so far, how would you describe the experience, you know, in Butterf Bluff League? Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this season you played 29 games um, for the first team. Um, so how, how has life been for you, you know, at the club? It, it was difficult. Oh. Really, really difficult. I cannot go very deep inside, but it's difficult. At first, everything was not going good. I played my first game. I made my debut with the first team against Ludo Guret. And in that game, everyone was surprised how I played. So... Surprised in a good way or in a bad way? Yeah, in a good way. I was also <laughs> okay. happy. I was also mm -hmm. happy when I went the game. But well, we lost 2-0. No, 3-0 in that game. But they were so happy with my performance and everything. And the next day we have a training. Because I didn't play like a full game. So the next day we have training like recovery. But with the ball also. So, but... The next day, it was like, oh, Nadi, you have to work hard now because um, you play just 20 minutes in the game and you think you've arrived, you know, a lot of things. Even though I was calm, I was not showing, like, anything. But I don't know why they were saying those things. So after that game, the next game, because I was thinking, I played 20 minutes and I did great. Maybe I could get extra 30 minutes or something. So the next game I came in was two, three minutes to end the game. Mm. In my head, I was like, no, I want to play. I want to play. So I was not happy. Then I brought my game down. After that game, I was not performing good in the training. And my agent also, who brought me to Botev, he was not... We are not talking at the moment. I think that day we didn't talk and everything. So he couldn't talk to me, like to be calm and everything. So it was, it was a difficult moment for me. And then everything was going like, not the way I wanted. But I still thank God. So how were you able to turn it around? You know, how were you able to make it positive? Because, I mean... If you've played 29 games this season, then obviously things changed, you know. So how were you able to change things? Yeah, I think um, during the vacation, because one of my friends came also to join the team. Mm -hmm. So during the vacation, I spoke to him, I spoke to the other guy, because we are three Nigerians there. I told them, if you don't want to play next season, me, I want to play next season. So I'm going home to work and then I need to take my position. I don't care who is there because you have a lot of players who is playing with experience and everything. So I said, I'm going there to take my place. I don't care who is there. 
So we came home, we walked together, me and the other guy. So this season, we, I don't know what happened. With God and everything, just like that. We almost missed the preseason because, because we went to Dubai and they were not issuing visa to Nigerians. Mm. So that could have cost a lot. But we joined them, I think, five days to end the preseason. We went there. The first game we played, we traveled today. And the next day, we played a game against Ura in, in a team in Russia. We beat them 2-1. I played, I think, 80-something minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So I think that was like the only chance we have to prove that we want to play. My friend scored, Ume, he scored a goal. And I was all over the pitch. I was running, trying my best. Like, and after the game, they were so happy. I think they sent like five, six players on loan from our team. So... So we can be able to play. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Um, and from your time in Bulgaria so far, what would you say is the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, after the Conference League, because I played two games in the Conference League. First game, I played. Um, we played at home, we played 0-0 at home, we played draw and went to Cyprus, we lost 2-0. I started the game, but um, they took me off after 45 minutes. I think that was the, the most difficult game in my life mm. because atmosphere and everything. So I could not handle the pressure. So after that game, I went home because every game I have to analyze myself if I did good or not. The bad things I did, I tried to correct them and everything. So I think the greatest lesson I've learned is that you just have to keep believing, keep working hard and uh, just trust the process. And with God, everything will be fine. Amazing, amazing. Um, okay, let's fast forward, you know, um, let's fast forward to playing for Nigeria. Um, you are a part of the under 20 squad now, you know, we just saw you at the under 20 World Cup. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, you didn't play the AFCON under 20. Yeah. 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 Was there any particular reason why you were, you didn't play there? Um, I can't say anything. Uh, um, because I don't know how they work and how they do the things here. So I just got called up in the World Cup. I don't know how. Mm. Okay. Um. But getting that call up to represent Nigeria at the 20 World Cup, how how did that make you feel? That was the only time I think I get excited because I was so happy. I've been waiting to play for Nigeria um, since I was a kid. I want to wear green, white, green, even if not in the Super Eagles, but somewhere in Nigeria, I need to play. Mm. Um, I was happy. I was happy, really, really happy, me and my friend. So, but being happy also in our head, we know it's time to show what we have, get something better. So... Uh Okay, and um, going through the tournament, I mean, um, first game against Dominican Republic, you played 90 minutes in that game. Um, you know, on paper, um, people will say that Dominican Republic was probably the weakest team in, in the group. But then they scored us first in that match. So yeah. when you went, when we went 1 0 down, were you still feeling calm, you know, or were you like, ha? Maybe we don't go mess up with me, Nigerians, no finish us. <laughs> no, 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 no. In the pitch, in the field of play, I'm always calm. Because I know it's 90 minutes. Till the end of 90 minutes, I think we need to keep fighting.